and there's money down the drain right there. Hello, I'm Steph, aka Literati Medium, and it's time for another book versus adaptation video. <laughs> so the format of this book versus adaptation video is going to be a bit different because, well, Quite honestly, there isn't much to compare about the two. The only thing the two really have in common is the premise that a man can remember his past lives. That's it. The similarities end there. So this month's book versus adaptation, I watched the Paramount Plus movie Infinite, and then I read The Reincarnationist Papers by D. Eric Mykrantz. It's going to become pretty obvious as I go which one I preferred, so I'm just going to go right out and say it. The movie is better. By a lot. And the movie's not even that great. I'm literally angry that I had to finish this book. And what's worse is that I had the, to buy this book in order to read it. If I had had the choice to DNF this book, I would have. So now I own this book and I can't even give it away because I bought it in the Kindle edition. So now I just have to delete it and there's money down the drain right there. I seriously don't understand how somebody read this book and thought, we should pay somebody buku money to make this into a movie. Now, I did recently read something that I think the author tried to get his fans to convince people to get it made into a movie. Correct me if I'm wrong there. This should never have been made into a movie, especially since they had to change pretty much everything about the book to make it into a decent movie. The only good things I can say about this book are the book makes it really clear that you can be reincarnated as either a man or a woman or maybe somebody who's gender fluid. And that is not something that's made clear in the movie. In the movie, it seems like they're pretty much, if you're a woman in this life, you'd be a woman in the next life. That might just have been a timing thing. And so that the viewers can identify which character is which, but it kind of sucked. And I definitely remember thinking that at the time I watched the movie. The second is that Evan is actually a pretty interested character in the book, at least at the beginning, until he completely loses his way, just like the book. The plot starts off with Ethan discovering the existence of the Reincarnationists, which is a secret society of people like him who can remember their past lives. And then the journey through the book progresses as he becomes a member of this secret society. But then somehow it ends with a bank heist that fails and he ends up in prison and then the book just ends. It insinuates that he's going to commit suicide and start his next life, but it still just ends. Like, what even was the point of this book? Except to maybe have no point, because there are certainly a lot of conversations about nihilism in this book. The worst offense this book probably has is its main female character. Poppy in this book exists solely to be the Asian femme fatale sex pixie. I may be able to forgive some of that if at least the sex scenes were good, but they weren't. They were pretty terrible, in fact, and didn't serve the character or the story at all. So she was just made as a sex object. I hate the book so much that I don't even want to talk about it anymore, so let's talk about the movie. Infinite, which you can watch on Paramount Plus, is actually a fun movie. It's not great. I wouldn't even necessarily call it good. But if you like Fast and Furious and enjoy that kind of fun action, but want a little bit of sci-fi, this would be a fun choice to watch. Evan is a much more likable and interesting character in the movie, even in spite of Mark Wahlberg's pretty wooden performance. They make his criminal history about him trying to get money for the meds he needs to control what he thinks is his schizophrenia, because he keeps having visions of past lives. and then enters the reincarnationists. What I found interesting about the movie that I was excited to read in the book and then the book just didn't have it was that the movie adds this element of good versus evil, that there's a good group of reincarnationists and a bad group of reincarnationists. So basically like the, the good group is all about the greater good and the bad group is the more nihilistic, nothing matters, let's just end this so we can end. The opposing side is led by Chiwetel Ejiofor, who I think just had a blast playing this crazy character. Every time you say, I don't know, this trigger gets pulled. Is it yours? Look, I don't know. 
The movie also made a really fun use out of the idea that you remember skills that you learned in past lives, giving these characters almost like superhuman abilities because they have so many skills and have had lifetimes to perfect those skills. Are there things you just know how to do? Like no one's ever showed you. Somehow each step in the process makes sense. Nora is also a much better female protagonist. She still falls a little bit into the action femme fatale female trope, but I really liked that she and Evan didn't have a romantic relationship. Her storyline was actually about getting her love back after he's tr his soul is kind of trapped in this microchip device that the bad guy Chiwetelegia for makes. I think the movie would have been better served if Mark Wahlberg and Dylan O'Brien had switched parts because I really liked Dylan O'Brien in this movie and Mark Wahlberg, I guess Mark Wahlberg produced the movie, so. But yeah, the movie was a decent, but not good action flick. Watch that and pretend the book doesn't exist if you plan on doing anything. Anyways, I don't really want to talk about this anymore because it still makes my blood boil. Of course, please check out my website in the description box and like, comment, and subscribe, and let's see what stories tomorrow brings. Mm -hmm.